I'm gonna show you three of the most important medications you need to know as an EMT. If you don't know these, it's pretty much impossible. You're not gonna pass an REMT. You're not gonna pass school. So let's learn about them right now together. Come on. Our first medication that we have here is aspirin. So let's talk here about aspirin. Aspirin, first off, if you don't know, there's four layers for you understanding, okay, what a drug does. What we have, we have to know, okay? What does a drug do in the body? Why do we give the drug? Who does not get the drug? And what is the dose? Those are the four most important factors of a drug. If we know these, those four factors in a drug, we're gonna understand it. We're gonna get it and we can use it. So listen to me here. First, let's talk about who gets aspirin. People get aspirin first that are adults, okay? We're not giving children aspirin in the ambulance, okay? We give aspirin to patients who are, we suspect or are having right now, because we confirmed it, they're having a heart attack. What this means, chest pain, difficulty breathing, nausea, vomiting, back pain, unexplained abdominal pain, nausea, right? Here's a pro I always say, you got a patient with pain from their neck to their hip bone, do an EKG, because heart attacks are sneaky. Now, with aspirin, what's the mechanism of action? Why do we give it? It's an antiplatelet aggregator. What this does is this. It goes into the body, and here we have an artery here. Here's my coronary artery, okay? If I have plaque in that artery, Okay, what's gonna happen is little platelets are gonna come along and there's platelets in your blood and stick to that, getting, making it worse, thus blocking completely. When I give aspirin, the platelets don't stick together anymore. It's an antiplatelet aggregator, okay? That's what I would give aspirin for baby aspirin in the ambulance when someone's having a heart attack, first thing. They might even have in their system by the time you show up if a dispatcher told them to do so and they're awake and alert. Cool? Okay, that's aspirin. Now, I said there was two more things. Contraindications, and then who doesn't get aspirin? Well, all these medications I'll tell you right now, the only contraindication really for these things is obvious things, meaning that, for example, with aspirin, if they're allergic to aspirin, right? If, they're aller if someone's having a heart attack, you'll want to get them aspirin only if they're literally allergic. Now, our dose of aspirin right here, is gonna be four baby aspirin. So one, two, three, four, full dose of 324 milligrams, four baby aspirin, 81 milligrams, and a patient has to have teeth to chew it up. That's aspirin. If you're not aware, our NREMT exam prep app is the first link in the description. I give you lifetime access. Now back to the video. So our next medication here, which I don't have here, but I have the piece of equipment that goes with it is our here, our mask and nebulizer, okay? What our medication here I'm gonna talk about right now is albuterol, okay? So, we have to know this. Asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD. These three emergencies we're gonna see in the ambulance, okay? Now, with these emergencies, what do we get? We get very, 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 very tight lungs. We get bronchoconstriction, okay? Very tight bronchioles, okay? And hang with me, what else we get? We also are gonna get hypersecretion of mucus, okay? So what I do, I open this up, I put albuterol in here. I put a second medication called ipotropium in here, okay? 2.5 milligrams albuterol, 0.5 milligrams ipotropium. I just create a duo neb, a duo neb. And then attach this here to the oxygen in the ambulance. Could be six, could be eight, liter, eight liters, both are fine, okay? Into our oxygen tree here in the ambulance or your spare oxygen on scene. Place in the patient. You're just given a mask neb of a duo neb, albuterol and ipotropium. Now let's break this down. I told you the doses, told you why we give it, but I don't, you gotta understand the mechanism of action. If you know what a drug does, then we know it for life. Albuterol, folks acts on the beta-2 receptor in the body. If I turn on your beta-2 receptor, I give you 
bronchodilation, thus opening your lungs and saving your life. If I give you ipotropium, ipotropium dries those nasty secretions in the lungs. The combination together is our first line for asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD, and so forth. I got something even more powerful than that, which I'm going to show you right now, which is epinephrine. Okay, this is, I like to call it the wonder drug of EMS, because there are so many different concentrations, so many versions, and so many different ways to give this drug epinephrine. So let's talk about this first. Now with epinephrine, what is our mechanism of action? Well, our mechanism of action is threefold. Number one, epinephrine acts on the alpha-1 receptor in the body. When I turn that receptor on because I just gave you epinephrine, you get vasoconstriction. So your blood pressure goes up and your blood shunts the core. This can save your life when you're in shock, when your blood pressure is very low. Remember that. Okay, well remember that. That's one of the methods that we give epinephrine. We give epinephrine during shock. Okay, that would be epinephrine that would be given, for example, through the IV in a drip. Okay, that's paramedic level stuff. Number two, beta one. Epinephrine can increase your heart rate and it will increase your blood pressure. So when I turn on your beta one receptor in the body, when I turn it on, your contractility, the strength of your contraction of the heart and the increase of your actual heart rate go up. So if someone has a really, really low heart rate and it's the primary reason that they're having an emergency, I can give ep epinephrine for that too. But here's the question. Why, if that's the case, why do people carry this around in their backpack when they're allergic to bees? Here's why. Epinephrine has a third very, very potent, it's a bronchodilator, even stronger than epinephrine. It's used in emergency asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD, to open up the lung tree. So when someone gets stung by a bee and they're allergic, the body goes in, literally, it's, a, it's, a, it's an immune response in the body. And what happens is the lungs start to constrict. When I give this, and the patient can self-administer to himself, or we do when we get there in the ambulance, with an EpiPen, we can now open up the lungs, again, saving that patient's life, okay? Epinephrine is, the dose changes a lot, depending on, on, on how you give it, but essentially, if I'm giving epinephrine for asthma, or I'm giving it epinephrine uh, for anaphylaxis, and I'm giving it into the muscle, into the muscle, we're talking about 0 0.3 milligrams for the adult, Okay, if I'm giving it in a cardiac arrest, that's gonna be one milligram, and that's gonna be IV. So the way to think about it is, if I'm giving epinephrine for respiratory reasons, for lung reasons, I give it in the muscle. If I'm giving it for heart reasons, like your heart's really stopped, or blood pressure reasons, I'm gonna put it right into your vein, okay? IV, IO. Pretty cool? I love it. Hey, if you're getting ready for school right now, where it's EMT, AMC, paramedic, first responder, whatever it is, first link in the description is lifetime access for you to our NREMT prep app. Make sure to hit the first link in the description, join the video vault, videos, practice questions, our community group, study plans, everything you need. Over 60,000 students have gone through this program. So click the first link in the description and I'll see you there.